One life. One place. Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. People here in Pittsburgh, they have a lot of... Yeah, when I come in, I usually check my email. We check to see if there's any uh, any memos from the supervisors. Other than that, I check any new mail that comes out. We just get it. Today's payday, so you got to love that day. Hi, I'm Brian Kuchayeski. I've been a paramedic for the city of Pittsburgh for about five years now. I've been involved in that actively since I was about 19 years old. Every time you try to watch the ambulance, you get a call. That's like that's like a given. That's just like eating. Every time you try to get something to eat, you get a call. At least you got to watch the truck today. Going downtown. Pretty much everybody calls me Cujo. First is the last name, Kushayeski. Just everybody shortens it to Cujo. And maybe, I don't know, maybe some of the women call me Cujo. For the movie, the dog, supposedly, I don't know. Yeah, we're going up to Woodland Road. 94-year-old uh, female patient, short of breath. Pittsburgh is actually a very heavily elderly populated city. It's, it's the majority of our calls are the elderly population. Hi, hey, ma'am, how you doing? Catherine McSorley has a bad heart condition. Attack, I'm not picking up on here, that's quite cool plan. Her heart is so weak, Cujo can't find a pulse. You having a lot of chest pain right now, ma'am? Yeah, What's the problem? The only place we could get a pulse was we couldn't get it in the wrist, it's radial pulse, you couldn't get the brachial pulse. The only place you can get it is in the carotid, which is the last place you would lose it before you lose all your pulses. Put you on some oxygen here, ma'am. Lift your head forward. Her heart was beating 180 times a minute. Normal rate is 80 to 100. So she was beating almost twice and sometimes over twice as fast as what she normally would be beating. Uh, with that came less blood flow to her arms, which is why we didn't have any pulses on her. 60s. No blood pressure, uh, no radial or brachial pulses. She is conscious though. Ma'am, how you doing? If Cujo doesn't act fast, Catherine could die. Cujo needs to get heart patient Catherine McSorley to the hospital. She was in a state that we kind of generally try to think of as like pre-arrest state, where you're just preparing yourself for her to go into cardiac arrest. I'm talking about 150 so far. Right now, pressure? No. That's still no blood pressure. You know, I can bear her up here with the muscle mass. There's some mass here. Oh. Yeah, Brian. Okay. 50 joules. 50 joules is sinking. Yeah, sinking. That's safe. Okay. You ready? Clear. Clear. Oh. Okay, honey, that's going to hurt. Okay, babe, keep on going. You're doing all right. right we party over her at 50 joules, which isn't a lot but it's enough to stop the heart and hopefully the heart will restart on its own. And the three medic five still here. Go ahead. Okay, we're leaving. Cujo rushes heart patient Catherine McSorley to the hospital. We're actually just a couple blocks away, so. Yeah, I think our patient's doing quite well, actually, uh, MD3. Uh, right now, pressure of 100. Uh, Paul's supposed to be about 90. She does throw occasional PVCs here. Um, stand by. I think she just went to VTAC. 
Vita, hi, how you doing? You all right? Okay. One second, honey. Catherine's heart races out of control. You all right? Okay, relax, relax. One second, one second, honey, okay? Just let me get a pulse on you here. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. The trauma team takes over. You know, you're quite a day, huh? Right. One, two, three. Are you having any chest pain? This is bad. This is better. You know, she went from no blood pressure to, to having one, so that's always a bonus. Can't really walk around without a blood pressure. If it took us a couple of minutes to get there, she would have been full-blown cardiac arrest, not breathing, no pulse or anything. So, actually, uh, a good job. We, you know, we, we did what we're supposed to do. Okay, man, will you take care, okay? I'm gonna try. Well, I'm, I think you'll do a good job now. I think you'll do fine. I'm, I'm very grateful to you, Philip. Oh, you're, you're quite welcome. Anytime, you know, anytime you need us, you just call, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Some of the days when, when you, you actually save a life, it makes it all worthwhile. There's probably nowhere else that you want to be at that, that point in time. They said he is breathing. It's behind a, a new high-rise building down in Oakland. Larry Kennedy's condition is a mystery. Someone said that uh, they, they just found him passed out on the ground. You never know. It could be anything. Good call, oh, 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 sir, oh, sir. Police also, please. Medic five on police three. Yeah, I'm gonna need that car started down here. I had to pin him down. It, it's one of those things, you know, we don't do it to hurt anybody. We do it to actually not let them hurt themselves and to not let them hurt us. Sir! Sir! How you doing? Larry! Larry, Larry, we're gonna get you in the stretch and we're gonna check you out, okay? Yeah, we called the police just in case we had to handcuff him if uh, we couldn't restrain him on the stretcher. Hey, Larry, how you doing, my man? How you doing? Larry? Larry? What's going on today, buddy? Larry Kennedy was found unconscious. On, the paramedics Larry? are it's trying to figure yeah, out Larry. why. Yeah, with the paramedics, okay? When we started to assess him, he had no signs of, of any type of problem. His pupils were good. He didn't show any of the classic signs from a drug overdose. You said you weren't feeling right? It could be, you know, five or six different things. So you actually do have to play kind of a detective, and you, you almost have to diagnose somebody in the field. When it's so vague like that, you just you have to do a little more investigation. Do you remember passing out, sir? Um, no, just uh, I feel... Tired, just hot and tired. Just hot and tired? Yeah. Okay. How old are you? 40. Do you know where you're at right now? Oh. Okay. okay. Just just relax. Just relax. Just relax, relax. okay? We're, we're the just, paramedics. We're just checking you out, okay? It's okay. Though. Found him outside of a high-rise building down in Oakland where he works. He became real combative initially. Shortly after that, with some inappropriate speech. Right now, he's still sluggish with some responses. Three, two, three. How are you feeling? Do you know where you are right now? Larry. Can you look, Larry? Can you look at me? Can you hear me? You try to look out for your own safety. And it wasn't a situation where you normally think that the scene can be unsafe. It wasn't like, a, you know, following a violent incident or anything. So I think when we're not on our guard, that's when we do get hurt. It kind of surprised us in there. Uh, just kind of jumped up and surprised us a little bit. 
Good. You seem like you're doing a lot better now. Yeah. The doctors determined that Larry had a seizure brought on by a migraine. Okay, sir. Well, good luck to you. Okay? Anytime, anytime. Okay. Thank you for... of paramedics, long hours, sleepless nights, and adrenaline-filled rescues. Experience the chaos of medicine in the streets. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life, medicine, miracles. for the opportunity to enthusiastically put themselves through hell. The combat challenge is difficult from the get-go, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Come on over here. Before the firefighters even step out on the course, they're putting on about 40 pounds worth of gear. That includes a 20-pound air tank system. On top of that, firefighters taking part in the individual competitions have to suck compressed air through a mask. It's just a whole different experience breathing through the mask. You just gotta... While he catches his breath, I'll show you the course. When the buzzer sounds, firefighters grab a 42-pound bundle of hose, throw it over their shoulder, then sprint up five flights of stairs. I find it's really hard to judge how much to give on the stairs. If you give too little, then you don't reach your personal best. It's a really hard thing to gauge, so I find that the toughest. At the top, they start pulling up a 45-pound roll of hose from the ground. You're pulling 45 pounds up, hand over hand, and it's all hand-eye coordination there. And with everything, you just train the technique over and over again in training before you come here. When that's done, they run back down and use a 9-pound mallet to drive a 160-pound beam a distance of 5 feet. Real quick, your whole body starts hurting, and you build up a lot of lactic acid and your muscles get fatigued. So if you're trying to do it in two minutes, you're hurting is very difficult. Next up, they run a 75-foot-long zigzag course of fire hydrants. You can knock them over, you get penalties, so just trying to keep your feet away from it, turning your body in towards it before you get to it. Already start having your feet out as you're coming around the hydrants. At the end of the zigzag course, they pick up a one and three-quarter inch full hose and run back busting through these saloon doors while hitting a target with a stream of water. As you're running with the hose, you need to lean forward and keep telling yourself, don't stop at the saloon doors. You want to run through the saloon doors as hard as you can to hit the target. A lot of competitors stop there and lose precious time. The worst is saved for last. With their lungs on fire and their muscles exhausted, they pick up a 175-pound dummy and try to sprint backward, dragging the dummy 100 feet to the finish line. You go all crazy, and then your lactic acid, it's, you don't have any more, uh, you're burned, you're drained, uh, and then when you're at the dummy, you know it's your last chance to be on this course, especially at the world, and that's where you go crazy. And when you are at the end of the, the, uh, the uh, finish line, you're done. Done is an understatement. It's very strenuous on your body. It takes a lot of conditioning. The firefighters are competing for individual and team honors. Individual competitors do the whole course themselves, all five events. The best team award is a compilation of three individual scores on a team. But there's also the team relay, where one person does only one part of the course and hands a baton flashlight to the next person who does another, and so on. Any which way it's done, though, some of these firefighters push themselves so hard and so fast, they barely make it to the end. So why put yourself through this much pain? It's uh, fitness. Uh, we all go crazy. It's a, it's a thing that everybody wants to do to be better fit, serve our uh, fire department better. Just the thrill of competition, of being the best, of uh, knowing that you can do it. We uh, had one, came locally to Lake Charles. We watched it and we just figured 